Here's some Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. We're doing a spider book for a change. Yes. Hey, hey Spider-Man. I know, right? Who? But, uh, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, so this is Spider-Man Black Cat, the evil that men do. That name I know. Yes, you're very familiar with Black Cat. Big character yours. This is written by Kevin Smith with art by Whoa. Terry and Rachel Dotson. Is this the... I remember we talked about a Kevin yeah, Smith like book a, a little bit. Yeah, like there was a book where you were like, I'll show ago. you a Kevin Smith book. Uh, this is very Kevin Smith and very, like... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah. But it's a ridiculous <laughs> six-issue miniseries that took place. Uh, it began in 2002. Mm -hmm. and um, It's, it's just, in continuity and everything? It's it not... is in continuity, okay. despite a lot of people's objections that it shouldn't be. Oh. Um, a lot of changes, a lot of retcons, but uh, not, not too far-reaching. Okay. You know, it's not like, oh, that doesn't inform the character in any way. It's like, oh, no, I guess that makes sense. But it's also, like, it gets... It's, it's, it teeters that line between heavy and light... You're like, oh, this is a cute little fun story, but like, oh, shit, we're going there? Hmm. Do you think we should? Do you think that's appropriate? And it's like, well, we already did it, though. But it's, it's already, already done. It's we already, already gone. did twice. <laughs> well, I, I bet you won't do it again. Like I, then I do. I have never seen her with skunk stripes on her suit before. Yeah, no, she has, uh, usually her suits have some semblance of white hair. It's the theming of her normal white hair along with, like, the rest of her suit. Uh, I've seen it done a number of ways. Um... Terry Dodson, of course, draws Felicia Hardy the most voluptuous she could possibly be. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll get into that visual, I guess, in the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm in it right now. <laughs> right. No, it's true. Uh, the story opens with a dead body of a girl being unearthed from mm -hmm. a dumpster in the middle of Manhattan. Her name's Trisha Lang. It opens like an episode of Bones. Yes. It opens like an episode of... Or Law and Order. Law and or, Order. Yeah. Bones. Castle. Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> So, you know, but it's true. It, yeah. It's just, it's like, oh no, like this poor girl was dumped in, 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 a, in a dumpster and then the, the sanitation workers found her. What's going on? Meanwhile, uh, in Hollywood, Los Angeles, uh, there's a uh, beautiful voluptuous, it's a Felicia Hardy. She's taking a shower. And we're like, oh man. Slow herself. Slow Sweet. Her. Let's, let's see <laughs> this. Well, don't worry. Uh, Terry Dodson draws her in as much gratuity that he wow. possibly muster because it's also Kevin Smith being like, it's a sexy shit. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to factor this. And, uh, it's cartoon it drawing. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. And uh, it's interesting because we're seeing a lot of like Felicia being sexy and, and, and sexual and overt mm -hmm. in her like thinking and in her expression. How she's like, man, it's been, it's been a long time. Like she is technically retired from being Black Cat. Uh, not through her own actions, but rather through comics being we didn't use her for a while. Mm -hmm. So Kev's like, hey, how about she comes back? Right. And we establish that she wasn't around because she retired. Okay. Yeah, Fine. she stole sure. enough. Right. Yeah. I've reached my limit. I leverage it into a sweet apartment in Los Angeles. And, you know, now I just like, you know, get wet and sexy. <laughs> For a living, I guess. Uh, Why would you live in LA if you're not trying to be in Hollywood? Right. She's not an actor. She's not trying the to lifestyle. be. Yeah. She probably just like likes the people. Was I that a know. story where she went to LA nope. once? Okay. No. Just like, where is she? I guess she was in LA. Kev's like, well, I know two down. things. I know New Jersey and I know yeah. LA. Yep. In 2002. And if it was, ain't living in New Jersey. If this, was in, if this was in 2014, it would also be Canada. <laughs> right. But uh, instead, it's just New Jersey and L.A. Okay. Uh, New Jersey comes into play because the main villain that he invents for this story is from Red Bank, New Jersey. Oh. <laughs> Which, of course, he is. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so she's having a great time taking a shower. She's thinking about how she hasn't, like... <laughs> being naked and all. Be, being naked and all. She ta she's thinking about how she's like, you know, ugh, I'm so sick of, like, men and women for that matter. It's like, oh, Felicia's bi? And it's like, yeah, why not? Maybe. That's hot. Okay, we'll do it's that. It's L.A., fuck it. Yeah, right? And so she's like, you know, man, uh, it's been too long since I've had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And she's thinking about how, like, you know, guys are like, put on the costume for me, baby. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> okay. And then she uh, clearly uses her shower head to masturbate. And you're like, oh, okay. We're we're getting steamy in this. <laughs> uh, it's Marvel Circa 2002, which means... What is happening? Marvel has <laughs> dropped the comics code. Right. Marvel's pushing the envelope. And... Uh, Joe Quesada, who was editor-in-chief at the time, is leveraging his Hollywood contacts to try and get, like, more eyes on this. This miniseries was plugged on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Wow. Because Kevin Smith had a relationship with Leno and The Tonight Show. He used to use segments. Yeah. Um, these remotes. 
um, called Roadside Attractions with Kevin Smith, which were hilarious. Uh, but he leveraged that into like plugging this book on the Tonight Show. Okay. And so Casada's like, it freaking paid dividends, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but it, as a result, you know, Kevin's like, well, I just want to have her masturbate with a shower head. And <laughs> I, I think that'd be kind of fun. And Joe's like, okay. Let's dial okay. it back a little bit. Like, okay. okay. The first issue is like, okay, man, stop. There's there's a line in here that I know what it was supposed to be because <laughs> of Smith talking about it. I may have gone too far in a few places. Few places. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. So before she takes a shower, she gets a phone call that like a friend of a friend or whatever named Trisha is missing. And she's like, oh, like, you know, I haven't been in New York in a while. And, you know, I know a few people there. Maybe I can look up some friends and try to, like, plot, like track down some Solve leads. Solve this mystery. Solve this mystery. Maybe I can look up an old boyfriend or two. And you're like, oh, Ooh. like Spider-Man who is married right now. But, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, okay, let's try and fuck that up. Yeah. So uh, she brings her black cock costume and goes to New York. Okay. Meanwhile, Spider-Man is swimming around the city. And he is dealing with a uh, another missing person named Donald Phillips, who is not missing. He's more dead. Uh, and he is this poor kid who, like, apparently uh, went to high school, and that's where teacher, uh, Peter is a teacher during this continuity. He's really? A, he's a high school science teacher. Okay. Um, because, like, when Straczynski took over Spider-Man, he's like, I'm not writing about Spider-Man taking photos for the Daily Bugle. Yeah, that, I'm sick of that. So instead, There's only like, so many friggin' stories about Spider-Man getting, or Peter Parker getting pictures. There's literally 70 years worth of stories. Can yeah. we try something else? So JMS is like, well, what if, like, he works for Midtown High as a science teacher. They need science teachers at this time. There was a teacher shortage, and they really needed people in math and sciences, and they were like, oh, you don't have a teaching certificate. Who gives a shit? You're, you're hired. Right. You want to do it. That's <laughs> yeah. your certificate. Yeah. yeah. And you have any experience. You're right. done. So Peter's a science teacher. Does he also cool. run the school paper? No. Ah. I mean, adorable? What a great <laughs> idea they never explored. Where he's like, get me pictures of that <laughs> debate team. <laughs> There's like a little kid named Peter Palmer. Palmer! <laughs> anyway, so uh, he's just he, like- He has a fake mustache he'll put on yeah. just for that. No, he, he was like, he's dealing with the ink. You know, it's like, oh, sorry, Mr. Parker, watch out. The ink's still wet. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> mustache. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's this poor kid. His name's Donald Phillips. He apparently OD'd on heroin, but nobody knew him to be an addict. Interesting. So he's like, so I'm gonna get like, on. Out of the blue, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get yeah. to the bottom of this. So Spider-Man's swinging around and he like stops a couple of like muggings, he chases a car, you know, he got some fun, cool Spider-Man action. All right. Um, we're all seeing Terry Dodson drawing Spider-Man and it's really cool looking. Yeah, it is. It's fun, it's kinetic, it's very evocative of an old style uh, from an artist named Mike Waringo, uh, who also did some great work on Spider-Man during this time. Right. Uh, but a very cartoony, but also like yeah. proportionate, not so outlandish, you can't believe it. Yeah. I feel bad, by the way, just as a quick aside about Mike Waringo, who was passed, and he's an incre he was an incredible artist. Uh, he was working, he launched the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man comic with Peter David, and that should have been like his flagship book. That should have been the book that was like Mike Ringo, superstar artist. This book is amazing. It was part of the other. And so as a result, like that book couldn't be fun and fresh and friendly because it had to do with more Lun and oh, like, and Spider-Man dying. And so like in one of his tie-ins, like he has to watch Spider-Man getting beaten nearly to death and savagely. And it's like, where's the humor and fun? Yeah. This is, he is not for this. Anyway. Waste. Total waste. I feel so bad. But uh, anyway, so Pete tracks down this guy. He like grabs one of them and then swings away with them. And the cops are like, does he normally take them? <laughs> oh my God, he's gonna drain him of all his bodily fluids. <laughs> yeah, so Spider-Man webs the guy to a wall and he's like, I need to know what you know about like pushers at Midtown High and a poor kid named Donald How Phillips. How does he identify this guy as being related? Oh, naturally he like was tracking down leads and dealing oh, with drug okay. dealers on the way. Oh, we, I see. We, we skipped all the legwork right. and got to the action. Yeah. Okay, you know? thank God. Uh, but what's great is he's like, hey, did you know what spiders do to their prey when they've trapped them in their webs? And the guy's like, what? <laughs> And You're a like, dude. And he's like, they eat their prey. And he lifts up his mask. He's like, I'm going to beat you. And he's like, Dad, no, don't bite me. All right, I'll tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> and he's cool. like, I, I don't I know anything. I can't believe this works. I know. He's like, yeah, I'll never do that again, oddly enough. <laughs> even though, you know, it clearly worked really well. Probably because Kevin Smith will never write another Spider-Man story. And nobody else thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so the guy gives yeah, up It's like the a name. joke. Oh, it's a total joke. Yeah. And it's cute and it's fun, but whatever. So, uh. The idea is that this guy is like, 
I didn't sell him, this kid, any dope or whatever, but like, I know that there's a new guy in town who's like a pusher to like movie stars. And he might have done it. They call him Mr. Brownstone. Okay. Like the song. You know the song. I like Guns N' Roses and I thought it'd be funny to name the main villain Mr. Brownstone. Okay. There's a song about doing drugs. Does he live in a brownstone? Probably. <laughs> I mean, he lives in New York and he has a lot of money. So yeah, sure. so he could. Yeah. It's more that like Garrison Klum, the main bad guy, Mr. Brownstone, is of Guns N' Roses fan. Ah. I kept trying okay. to make Mr. Crowley with <laughs> yeah. my Ozzy. Mr. Like, Mr. Brownstone. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. Something That's else. Right. Uh, <laughs> so what, this guy made his own nickname? Yeah. Because he's totally cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he literally just tr- comes up with his own You can name. call me Mr. Brownstone. Yeah, he's like, ah, oh, Mr. Well, he needs an alias in order to sell yeah. drugs at all. So yeah, sure. okay. But uh, basically, I used to be in real estate, but I much prefer the drug business. <laughs> yeah. I named myself Mr. Brownstone because I was just a big GNR fan, but then I got into <laughs> drugs and I'm like, oh, that's perfect. If there's only some way I could like merge the two business. Anyway, <laughs> now that I know there's a guy named Mr. Brownstone, blah, 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 like, can you give me a couple of names of actors who use Mr. Brownstone services? Mm-hmm. And he's like, sure, I don't know. His face is on a magazine recently. And he's like, that's helpful. And the guy's like, well, he's into teenage boys. I don't know if that helps. Like, he's got a place in Soho. He's just, just dropping... Kevin Smithism, like anti Hollywood, like uh-huh. you know, creepy actors do shit, do do fucked up shit. If the actor arranged for Donald to come to him and like they got high together, or yeah. Something. And he's like, "Do you know if Donald wanted to be there?" And he's like, "Well, you know, I, no, no, he did not." Mm. Spider was like, "Okay, thanks." So then the cops show up and they're like, "Hey, what are you doing with this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> like they chased him all the way Why to the. Why have building. you tied this person up? I I threw it up twenty three flights. Let's just. <laughs> <laughs> so Spider-Man like goes off Felicia does her own investigations uh, She finds out about The actor She knows who he is People and... know she's Black Cat right? Oh totally Well like, here's the thing They should Her identity was public knowledge Okay um, Well she mentioned that people wanted her to put on the costume So that implies that That they know who she is. Yeah, but she was a thief out here. I figure, like, you don't really come back to New York unless you're hiding. Well, yeah, but she's looking... She's not looking to hide. So she shows up, and she's she's figured out that the actor's name is Hunter Todd. Okay. And Hunter Todd is the the guy we're looking for now. And uh, so here's the line that they had to change. Hmm. She says, so I guess the best way to get a lead on Trisha would be to play a little cat and mouse with the flavor of the month. And if Hunter Todd's the mouse, then that makes me Hmm. the cat. The line was the big pussy. I <laughs> and uh, I knew yeah. that was coming, but I was not expecting the big part. And Joe Casada's like, no, <laughs> you pulled that. Pass. Pass. How about the cat? Yeah, I like that. That ties into the cat and mouse thing I did. It's... So Spider Man is like doing his own investigations, trying to figure out who Hunter Todd is because he's like reading people magazines and stuff like that. And he's like, who reads this all the time? Like, how could anyone do this? Yeah. Uh, but he does figure out who Hunter Todd is. So basically, he swings out to Todd's Soho apartment. Right. Um, Todd is on the phone with Mr. Brownstone to get another hit. This is all very convenient. Very. <laughs> well, it's a six-issue series. We've got to move yeah, on. Yeah, this is the easiest mystery yeah. to unravel. We're not even, what, halfway through the book? Nope. And they've already figured it out, everything? Oh, yeah. Well, they figured out who the guy to the, leads them to the guy is. That's yeah. why it opened, like, Law & Order, because we've got to structure it like Law & Order. Right. Yeah. So uh, Black Cat sees somebody skulking around Hunter Todd's apartment. She's like, oh man, who's that guy? I'm going to just bust up their shit. So she swings in and that's when she realizes as she's crashing through the window with Spider-Man that it's Peter. Mm. So the two of them just crash through the building (laughs) and then into their apartment. And there's like a chick with Hunter Todd, you know, another like starlet or floozy or whatever. But he's like, hey. Get the hell out of here. Why are you breaking into my house, man? Yeah, and Felicia's like, I'm, like, they're both, like, on the ground, like, oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm looking for Trisha Lane. And he's like, oh, tr- Trisha Lane? And they're like, yeah, to t- Trisha Lane, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when... Seems like you might know who that is. <laughs> it seems like you might. So Spider-Man like, grabs no, him. Like, no, I just have a speech impediment. Right, so Spider-Man grabs him, and he's like, you better tell me what's going on. And then suddenly he just, like... The Hunter Todd just has like this weird reaction and Felicia's like what are you doing and he's like I didn't do anything I just grabbed him and um, the chick goes oh shit he's ODing 
He just shot up, like, right before you right. crashed through well, that window. Seemingly, that must be what happened, but no. Uh, no. So, Something uh, else is going on. She's like, oh my god, like, he's ODing, and Spider-Man's like, I don't know what to do. You've never seen Pulp Fiction? Well, Felicia turns to the girl and she goes, do you have any adrenaline shots in the house? Oh and my she goes, god. I don't know, and then she starts ODing. Oh. And then the two of them just kind of, like, drop to the floor and die. Oh, and, crap. Ah! And Spider-Man's like, what the hell is happening? And then on the other end of the phone, someone's like, I think I might be able to shed some light on this. And Spider-Man picks it up and he's like, what's going on in here? <laughs> and the guy's like, both Mr. Todd and Ms. Cummings are experiencing massive overdoses. Overdoses. They'll be dead in moments. And he's like, what? Well, who's giving them overdoses? Who are you? And he goes, I'm Mr. Brownstone. <laughs> Click. I'm like living heroin. Yeah. So he's not. Uh, so he uh, hangs up and you're like, oh no, dun dun dun. Yeah. I'm going to spend $3 on the next issue to find out what happens. That's Meanwhile, at Carnegie Hall, uh, Mr. Brownstone, also known as Garrison Klum, is uh, closing his cell phone and going like, well, we're going to have to scratch Hunter Todd off as a client. And his brother, Francis, who is like his, his major domo or his, uh, you know, vizier, yeah. is like, oh man, he was going to give me producer's tickets. And he's like, oh, who wants to go see the producers now that Bra Broderick and Nathan Lane have left? Huh. Like, who cares? And he's like, I like Mel Brooks. What do you want from me? He's like, ah, ha, ha. Uh, Bendis is doing this too over there. Garrison Klum is this high-profile, kingpin-esque, philanthropist guy. And it's like, oh, he's hiding behind the limelight. You know what I mean? He's, okay. yeah, he's already, like, obfuscating like, his I'm criminality. So I'm so famous as Garrison Klum. Yeah. Right. You'll never guess I'm Mr. Brown. Exactly. Why would I hide in plain sight? So... She also, uh, so the, the two bodies are carted off while Spider-Man and Felicia watch from a nearby building and Spider-Man's just like seething and Black That's Cat's like, man, like I can feel him staring at me. Mm. 10 bucks, he's got a mad on. Wanted to say hard on, but we're not gonna be able to do that. Right. Kasada's like, no. Because well, it's caused by his, he's, he's so mad. He's not, he doesn't even have he's a boner. We're not saying boner. he's saying, he's saying he's got a mad on like, and this is a thing that these characters will say. It's an expression I've never heard anywhere except no. in comics, where I've like literally seen Spider-Man like crash the window and go, Spidey's got a mad on! And it's just like, it's, a, it's an expression that means like I'm raging and I want to kick some ass. Right. I've never heard that used. I've never used it out loud. Right. Because it would sound like I am saying, I've got a boner! Right. And I'm not going to dignify that with <laughs> right. any validation. Uh, so I just wanted to mention it because clearly Smith wanted to say, that Spider-Man is a boner because the black hat is so hot. Right. And so Spider-Man's just staring at her for a few panels and she goes, what? And he goes, do you have any adrenaline shots in the house? And she's like, what? And he's like, so since when are you a heroin expert? You go out uh, to LA, you become all, all hoity-toity, you got all this information. She goes, what, I've never seen Pulp Fiction before? He goes, Pulp what now? She goes, Jesus Christ, Parker, see a movie. I have no trouble believing that Spider-Man does not know what Pulp Fiction is. Know what Pulp Fiction is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. The, when I found out that Spider-Man was a huge Elvis Costello fan, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's never <laughs> seen Pulp Fiction. Yeah. God, like, between fighting Electro and Sandman, you'd think you'd find time to go to the movies. <laughs> and Pete's like, oh, yeah, sure, because you're the queen of Quiet Nights at Home. And she's like, oh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> he's like, well, I'm just saying, you know, one of us broke up with the other one because the other one told them that they were Spider-Man. You know, I'm just saying, you know. And it's fun to see, like, there's, a, like, actual banter of yeah. these two who, like, have a strong history together, yeah. but also are not together for good reasons. Right. And, uh, and are thrust upon each other. And it's cute, because he's just, she's like, God, you can't blame me for that. I was a kid. He's like, yeah, in the same way that, like, Monica Lewinsky was a kid, or that Amy Fisher was a kid. And you're like, that's in poor taste. You can't Yeah, what are you doing, man? Saying. And she's like, excuse me. Like, I'm not the one who hooked up with my high school sweetheart. And you're like, okay, first of all, Kev, um... <laughs> They met in, uh, in college, so it's not, it's not bad, but, you know. I'm going to let it slide because I can, ma I can imagine that Felicia deliberately didn't remember their history. But I like it because <laughs> Spider-Man then goes, right. that's the best decision I ever made. She's like, well, good for you. Like, go be well, with Mary Plain. it's boring and stupid. Yeah, you're lame. Anyway. This is, this is a sidebar, but, like, why couldn't the editor have noticed, like, that mistake? They never notice those mistakes, and it makes me crazy every time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, nope. You're so interested in getting, like, the dirty words out that, like, that you didn't you're notice ignoring, that they... like, obvious, well-known because... facts about the character's right. backstory. Yeah. Please. Yeah, maybe it's a, maybe it's meant to be that way. It could be, and I'll take it. As maybe that. I, I guess that's really hard to change too. Yeah, your what college else would the sweetheart. Line be? But the yeah, editors are like, thing. Well, Look, I mean, kind of. I just try and make sure that the right much. person is saying the right line. Together. That Peter Parker's words are not coming out of Felicia's mouth. Yeah, I need like, to make sure that, that the, the, the arrows are pointing in the right way. Right, right. right. I mean, at the same time, you need Felicia to belittle their relationship. Sure. 
high that's... school sweetheart is more appropriate, I think, than, yeah. than college sweetheart. It gets at the concept she's conveying, even if it's not technically correct. <laughs> Which is the worst kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, but it's great because she says, you know, every time that we get together, you always talk about how I couldn't accept that you were Spider-Man and Peter Parker at the same time. But you never go like, hey, Felicia, you sure saved my butt that one time against my Spider Slayers. Or it was so sweet of you when you went through that surgery to get your bad luck powers just so we could partner up and watch my back in the field. All I ever get out of you is you would love Spider-Man and not me. Meh. And Spider-Man goes, hey, Felicia. You sure saved my butt that one time against the Spider Slayers. And you know, it was really sweet when you went through all that surgery to get the bad luck power so we could partner up and watch my back in the field. And the way you drop kicked me through that window, that was total textbook. Nice job. And she's like, eat it. All right, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he says like, I'm sorry, I've been going through a really rough patch. Like, friends? And then she pulls him in and she's like, I really hate you, you know that. And he's like, and I am thoroughly disgusted by you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yup. <laughs> That's a dangerous ex relationship right yeah. there. The, like this is where Kev like actually demonstrates like I get relationships, I get interpersonal dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like okay, that's cool. So it's great because Spider Man's like so okay, we're we're got to cross notes. I'm looking for a kid who obviously wasn't into heroin. You're looking for a girl who obviously wasn't into heroin, or what? Or was she? Was she into the Ron? And she goes the Ron. He goes I can talk straight. And she goes no, she wasn't into the Ron. <laughs> she also wasn't into heroin either. You freaking dope. <laughs> so. Uh, basically, she's like, well, I'm going to go, like, try and figure it out, like, uh, over at my expensive, beautiful, amazing suite over at the Seasons. Mm. And, uh, you know, we could we could trade notes over there if you want, along with a big bowl of chocolate-covered strawberries. <laughs> and he's like, I don't think that's such a good idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I'll be there. Bye. And she swings <laughs> over to make sure that he gets a good view of her ass as she swings out. Mm -hmm. And she's thinking to herself, like, please be following me, please be following me. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Mm -hmm. Ah, screw it. And so he follows her. Huh. And then the two of them have like a cute little like back and forth swing through the city moment. Okay. Where they're just having an awesome time like trading places. And she like jumps on his back and like riding him as they fly through the city. And <laughs> it's very overt. Yeah. And it's great because he's just like, she, she rides on his back, right? Then she flips over and gets underneath him. And they're swinging by, and he's like, spider sense tingling. And she's like, oh, that's what you're calling it now? <laughs> and it's great because, like, he's swinging by, and he goes, take my hand. And she goes, this one? He goes, yeah. And then he puts his web line into her hand, and then lets go, and she springs away from him, and he goes, gotcha! <laughs> and he's like, that was too close. Mm. I, gotta, I gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah. I am in a relationship. <laughs> yeah. I am married. I cannot do this. And this is spandex. Yeah. I feel everything. Big time. Do you know I had a mat on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, so, I... I Looking at this, I'm like, oh, so it's like Kevin Smith's fault that they like insisted on breaking up the marriage, right? Because this is working so well. Yeah, no. People are like, oh, this is great. This is the kind of stories that we should be telling it's about like, Spider-Man. No, yeah, yeah, this is the story I want to tell about Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> like, I just because that's the problem is that you can't. Because why? The only reason that the scene is interesting and tense is because Peter's in a relationship. Right. They can't be if they could just fuck all the time. <laughs> Then it's just like, what are we watching? Foreplay? Yeah, That's then there's fun. no tension. There's no yeah. tension. They know each other then already. Then it's like, oh, they cool, let's history. just do six pages well, yeah, of him but, with no pants on. But you could do it where he's in like a relationship with someone else, but not married. Yeah, and then we can make him into a cheater because it's not marriage, so it's like we well, can Well, it's push like that. he's trying to decide between yeah, these different... It's a Betty and Veronica thing, you know? Yeah, that Betty sucks, and Veronica, though. there's no exclusivity in that relationship at all. Yeah, that's what we want. That sucks. Because <laughs> like I said... The reason why this is kind of like hot and also surprising and like tense is because he's trying not to bang her. Yeah. And because they have a history. So uh, Clum is having like a great time at this like gala that he threw mm -hmm. and then the wall explodes and Scorpia appears, a female scorpion who was actually established in previous stories. Oh, but this okay. Is her first, I've like, never heard of her. And you never will again. Uh, <laughs> she shows up and she's like, she has a, because the, the, the gale is at Carnegie Hall. She goes, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Her, her, her. And, uh, you break through the wall in a scorpion <laughs> costume. I wish it was like that clunky. <laughs> but she just says practice, which you're like, shut up. What God it, damn it. Oh, uh, did you practice that entrance? Breaking that wall. I don't understand. I wish that Are you was, doing a thing? If they had, if or are you just completing pages. the phrase? I don't what? understand. What did you just practice? Complete the phrase. Uh, the line? Yeah. So Spider-Man and Felicia like see the wall explode. So they swing by conveniently. Mm -hmm. And so she goes and she's like, I've come for Clum. Ha, ah, that rhymes. And she's like, gonna kill him. This is how, uh, I only mentioned it because he's German in origin, Garrison Clum. Yeah. And so it could be Clum, 
like okay. Heidi Klum. Yeah. Right. But she says, I've come for Klum that rhymes. So it's establishing that's actually how you pronounce the name. Okay. I'm just saying that for those people who might say, like, it's actually it's Klum. Totally Klum. It may be, but Smith wants to be Klum, and that's what we're saying. So yeah. uh, basically, Pete and Felicia like team up and just beat the crap out of her. Yeah. And they do a great job. Uh, it's funny because like Felicia basically grapples Scorpia's tail, which of course isn't really attached to her body. It's like a mechanical tail. Yeah. A, she a had mechanical, mechanical tail. tail. So Black Cat hits the tail and then just jumps out the hole. She's like, maybe this will work and maybe Pete will help me. So she just drags Scorpia. She's like, ah! She's trying to like brace herself from falling. Uh -huh. And then the tail snaps off. And Spider-Man's like, excuse me, and just jumps on her head, smashing her face into the ground, and then pivots off of that and dives out the window to catch Felicia. Right, who's now falling. Who's now falling, broke. so he webs the tail and then loops it over a flagpole, and then, like, basically they even each other out so they're right across from each other. Right. And he's like, hey, are you okay? And then she just impulsively grabs him and then just smooches him. Oh, wow. And they hold each other, and everybody down below them is like, yeah, Spider-Man, whip Get it him. out, do oh, it! God. And then Mary she Jane realizes just watching on TV. she does Come not. On. There is a great story around this time where a woman publicly says that she is Spider-Man's mistress, huh. and Mary Jane sees it, and it's dope. Wow, how it's executed. We'll do that story one day, but not now. In, in this case, Mary Jane is not in the book. Wow, and really? Yeah, because if she was, she'd be this the entire time. It should be a grumpy cat. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so she kisses him, and she's like, "Oh, sorry," and he goes, "No, it's." No one's ever tried to French me through my mask. <laughs> There's a whole really, barrier there. Yeah. It doesn't really work. It doesn't work. Well, she wasn't thinking. You know yeah. what I mean? She's just like, ah. Uh, so they go back up to Carnegie Hall and they went bumping to Garrison Clum. And Clum's like, okay, I gotta fucking start making time with these people. I know yeah. they're on to me and I made fun of them. I did the whole Taken thing several years before Taken came out. Yeah. And uh, so. But I, but I gotta like pick up appearances. So he pulls in Felicia and Spider Man. He's like, look at these two great people who saved me Spider Man and Catwoman. <laughs> and she goes, it's Black Cat. He's like, oh, whatever, who cares? It's... Anyway, Garrison Clum at your service. Nicely done. Anyway, goodbye. Uh, thanks for coming out. And Spider-Man's like, wow, you, you, maybe you might want to like dial back your high profile nature. You've been kind of like, yeah. you know, because like maybe you've, made, you, you've been a target for high profile assassins. And he's like, I can't let the terrorists win, you know. There'd be no point to that, sir. Ah, he, pop words. Yeah. yeah. And he says, uh, he says, sir, on the phone when he's Mr. Brownstone. Hmm. And Spider-Man's like, hmm. And then he leaves. That's awfully coincidental. Yes. So then uh, Felicia's like, what's going on? He goes, call me crazy, but I think we just found Mr. Brownstone. <laughs> it's like, what? you mean after randomly saving this one guy's life? Yeah, it turns out that he's the guy we happen to be looking for. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, that's right. So Spider-Man. We weren't even trying to do that? <laughs> no. Yeah. So Spider-Man and Felicia go to Scorpia's prison cell, and they basically annoy her until she tells them who hired her. <laughs> okay. They just bug her. Yeah, they he yeah. throw webs he throws web balls at her. He says that like if she doesn't tell him who hired her, Felicia will sing memories from cats until she lets him know who she is. So she sings <laughs> memories. That is okay. funny and dumb at the same yeah, that, time. I guess she doesn't care about she's not like, He'll murder me if nope. I no. She's just like, like fuck you, I'm I, gonna help you. You arrested me. You kicked me in the face. It's but she does give it up. Oh, totally. Yeah. Because yeah. memories is so annoying. It's, it's just, that's the joke. Or she doesn't really fear. Well, it's both. It's just like, I will, I would rather not deal with you yeah. anymore. Yeah. So the Ortegas is a crime family slash whatever. It's a group of like gang members. Sure. It's a gang family. Yeah. Uh, who hired Scorpia and tried to eliminate Mr. Brownstone as the competition. Okay. Because they are a bad group of drug dealers. And uh, Mr. Right. Brownstone and Francis literally go to Ortega's house. And they're like, hey, you uh, tried to kill me, man. You might wanna not do that. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, everybody's busted out their guns. They're ready to go. They're ready to kill these two like high society nerds. <laughs> and uh, there's the, the, the head of the Ortega's wife who has like, an infant child is like, hey, what's going on out here? And then she collapses. And Clum's like, looks like something happened to your wife and your men. And then all of them start ODing. Hmm. Is this a power he has? Yes, it is related to a power he has. Okay. I'm so, like, this is very suspicious. It's very suspicious. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, you're ODing too now. And the guy's like, no, oh, now I'm ODing from heroin. <laughs> and he's like, okay, now everyone's going to die. And Francis is like, dude, 
they're going to find heroin in the system. It might lead back to you. He's like, oh, that's a good point. How can we figure out how to fix that? We're going to have to make it look like it was actually like a vicious gang murder. So Felicia and Spider-Man are like two steps behind Brownstone. Mm -hmm. So when they get there, everyone has been hacked up with cleavers. Ah! Oh, and the infant child has been left there amongst the carnage. Yikes. Well, thank God right. the baby made it. That's right. Does Spider-Man strap it to its chest? And then be like, all right, you're Spider-Baby now. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's he going to do with that Spider-Baby? <laughs> he does not. Uh, instead, <laughs> they go back to Felicia's awesome hotel room. What, is she dresses up like Gwen Stacy? That's just, <laughs> she, headbands are outlawed now? Come on. <laughs> hey, she's no white hair. hair. It's a no spider white hair. Girl. Gwen Stacy's well, blonde. blonde. Yeah, but it's dark. It could be blonde. I can't well, tell. Well, it's not. <laughs> anyway. It's very light So a black headband. So Felicia's <laughs> like, now I know why I gave up being a costume. Like, this world sucks. It's mm. horrible. And Spider-Man's like, at least the baby made it. Yeah, but like a lot of other people die. But it's cute because Felicia's like, that's what I love about Peter Parker. He finds the bright side. Mm. And I'm like, he doesn't normally, but I like that you did that in this. <laughs> so yeah. That's not a trait he has, but okay. Yeah. He'd just be like worrying about things. He'd be he'd, he'd blame himself, but I appreciate that he doesn't. I'd get there in, uh, in time. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, yeah. I was too busy having dry humping sessions with you in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> hey, mate, yeah. take care of this baby. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 they give it to Child Protective Services. So Spider-Man's like, it's time to drop in on Clum. So they cut to Clum's like very expensive high rise. Yeah. There's a lightning storm coming, mm. and uh, he's like sipping brandy while looking out the window. Lightning strikes. Spider-Man and Black Cat are standing there watching him. That's cool. Flashes away. They're gone. Huh. And he's like, "Oh, jeez. I think they're on to me." Uh. And then they leave. Or, "Oh, jeez, I'm going insane." Yeah. Or whatever. So they're leaving. The guilt. No. So they're just he, fucking with him? Yeah. They're just like, hey, that was like, fun. He's like, why didn't we break in the window and kick his face in? And he's like, because we need to gather evidence on him. We can't just punch him. Mm. And she's like, but the, reason, could, though. the mm. reason we're wearing costumes is so that we don't have to do what the cops do. Right. Do you see a badge anywhere in this cleavage is a line from the book that is actually said. Wow. And okay. he's like, yeah, but uh, like. I don't, but let me look. Yeah. Mm. But like, listen, we, yeah. Let I'm me still look. looking. Boink. So. He's like, I'm gonna look listen. like Roger Rabbit's uh, henchman with the weasels. <laughs> I'll handle this one, boss. <laughs> nice booby trap. Thank so, you. So, <laughs> anyway, he's like, uh, you know, we don't know anything about it. Like, if we go to the cops right now, it's like there's no track marks, there's no evidence. It's just like people dying. This guy on the phone. I'm not gonna testify. Like, we got right. nothing. Yeah. But don't you see? He's. He's Mr. Brownstone. Right. Because I said he I was. Because I said he was, and that's his point. And she's like, yeah, but like we're dressed up like this so we can kick ass and take names. And he's like, she's like, I'm going back there and I'm going to punch him in the face. And he's like, don't do that. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. And then they get into a fight because he like grabs her hand to keep her from leaving. Right. She's, she's like, like oh, oh, no. Laden hands. Yeah. So she like gets the drop on him and then webs him to himself because she knows how his web shooters work. Yeah. And then she's like, you should be here when I get back. It's yeah. not going to be very long. And so Spider-Man's like, don't go. He, he might be really dangerous. And she says something really sexist and inappropriate. So she <laughs> leaves. She says, I'm a woman with father issues pushing 30, crammed in a wet leather suit and nursing a mean case of PMS. What's more dangerous than that? And you're like, I don't know. Anyway, so... Kevin. <laughs> so uh, Garrison is seemingly sleeping in his bed. Uh, Felicia sneaks in. Happens upon the bed, throws it open. There's a CD player playing Snoring. And then Garrison oh, Klum comes boy. out and he's like, obviously I was a big Ferris Bueller fan, like Kevin Smith is, lol. <laughs> and so, Everything's movies. <laughs> yeah. Everything's movies. Everything's coming up movies. So, uh, Why don't you throw a book reference in, Kev? Here. <laughs> nah. He read Catcher in the Rye. And she's like, I know you're Bristol Brownstone. He's like, I, yeah, it's me. It's Good luck proving it, though. Yeah, and he goes, and then he like takes out like a spoon and some heroin and a lighter. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Do you know what this is? This is all the paraphernalia you need to like get high." And he basically like cooks up some heroin and then puts it into a shot glass. And then he holds up the shot glass and he goes like, "Watch this." And then the heroin in the shot glass bamfs out of the shot glass and into Felicia's system. What? And she's like, "What?" And he's like, "I'm a low-level teleporter." Oh. And so he has completely incapacitated her, and he's like, they tell me that heroin is just is, is actually even better than sex. You let me know if they're right. And then he takes off her clothes, and then we end the issue. Yikes. Yikes indeed. Four years later, what? the next issue comes out. 
Huh. You have to be shitting what? me. No. <laughs> what happened? Four years. Four years later. Wow. Issue four comes out. Everything has changed. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the, the way that they, like, they... Yeah, the logos are the all logos, different. The logos, the barcodes, the, like, everything. <sighs> Even Dodson's style has shifted. Wow. So, anyway, but four years later, Black Cat is in prison, and she meets with her attorney. How much time has passed... In the book? In the book. A day. Okay. Oh, we okay. Gonna, we're gonna find out. Yeah, right. let's find out. Let's, let's, go, let's back. go back. So, Felicia meets with her lawyer. She's like, I don't have a lawyer. It's Matt Murdock. Of course, red glasses. Hey. It, it's Unless a lawyer. It's dark, dark. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, I have gotten my law degree. Now she even looks more like Gwen, because now her hair does look yellow. I know. Well, it's also the flare, fluorescent lights. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, so she meets with her lawyer, who is Matt Murdock. She doesn't know. She didn't hire him. Okay. Um, Peter hired him. So basically, the, the cops show up, and they found her in a state of undress, and like high on heroin, and Garrison Clum was dead. Oh. Basically, they assume that Felicia got raped by Garrison Klum. And then, like, And then she murdered him in revenge. Okay. So... That's what the reader is led to believe happened as well, well I assume. That's what... Yes. Yeah. Because we... At this point Because we story. skipped. Yeah. Also, they forgot because it was four freaking years ago. <laughs> but, sure. Uh, we have the issues right over there. You can refresh... Nah. No, no, no. But uh, Murdoch is basically like, if we prove that he raped you, we can claim self-defense and you'll be out of here. And she's like, no, no rape kit. We're not doing that. And he's like... Okay. This is your defense, though. This is it. And she's like, he didn't rape me. We're not using that as a defense. Mm -hmm. Like, have you That's ever... That's not true, and, so it's not... Yeah, uh, and she goes into this whole thing where she's like, do you understand, like, why people rape other people? Like, where, like, what it feels like to have been raped? Like, it's a whole thing. And, like, he, the men aren't doing that to, like, to get sexual gratification. They're doing it to, to own you and humiliate you. And I'm not going to admit that that man broke me. And mm. also, he didn't rape me, technically. So, uh, And, you know, he's like, look at these photos. Like, this dude, he got killed by somebody. And you're the only one there. Right. And I'm just going to say, like, a rape kit would help your defense if it was self-defense. And she's like, he didn't rape me. I didn't kill him. You're a bad lawyer. Get the hell out of here. Right. And so Matt's like, okay, <laughs> bye. So That's all Matt had. That's like, well, I had one idea. Well, he's and, basically just uh, like you don't like it, so. Well, uh, he goes, "We'll see how uh, the judge owes me a favor. Like, I'll talk to him and see what we can what we can scrounge up from this new set of information." Okay. Meanwhile, by the way, Daredevil's identity has been outed, and so everyone's hounding Matt Murdock over being Daredevil. Okay. He is defending it. He's saying like, "I wasn't Daredevil," because it's I didn't. You can't prove it. Mm -hmm. But it's a very flimsy argument. It's not helping anybody. Right. So Matt goes to his law office. Uh, he's like, I don't want to be disturbed, Fog. He's hounded by reporters. Mm -hmm. Foggy's like, uh, there's a school teacher in your office. He's like, I don't, what? No. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's Peter. Yeah. He's like, so you tell me what's going on, man. And Matt's like, she didn't kill Clum and she doesn't want to take the rape thing. Like the rape defense. Defense, yeah. And Pete's like, but she was like naked in his house like and his dead body and his dead body is there like could have killed him and he's like i you know i don't know what to tell you pete like it's it's rough you know and he's like okay well well he would know if she was lying too right he so, should but he doesn't bring that up well okay. he also says the rape defense like she's not taking the rape defense he does say she didn't kill him yeah but she also says he didn't rape me right and he's not saying that that's the case yes yeah but i was just saying he doesn't like say that like and i know for a fact that she didn't kill him he just he kind just of says, says that he says he she didn't kill him okay. and she doesn't want to go she doesn't want to use the rape defense right uh so pete's like okay well we're gonna have to go over there and break her out and he's like what and he's like are you in your mind okay i get that you're spider-man uh, right and, and i'm like, daredevil but i'm also a lawyer yeah, he's like, so did you use me to get information about the inside so that I could, you, you could break the... I'm not, that's... You are violating our friendship, Parker. Nice job. And he's like, listen, Matt, like, everything is topsy-turvy. The cops don't trust me. Your life's in the toilet. Like, come on. Like, let's just go get her. <laughs> come on. <laughs> let's break the law. Come on. Come on. Foggy can't I, I feel do the like kind of stuff that I can do. This situation does not get warrant... Peter going to her. this extreme. But no. he does say... She's been in jail for a day. He's like, yeah. And he's like, listen, Peter, like, I, I can't stand by your side and do this. And Pete's like, I stood by your side when you beat the kingpin and then declared yourself kingpin of New York. 
Mm. Which is the real thing that happened. Did that happen after? <laughs> yeah. And so uh, what was the story going to be? Right? Before? <laughs> I know why. this is like you know why drenched took... in the continuity that happened after this. The fact that Garrison Clum doesn't die at the end of that issue says he never died in the original story yeah. outline. It's and just totally different. And he just wanted to completely change everything. Or he didn't know what to do. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to do this. And everyone probably freaked out. He's like, okay. well, I'm just going to take some time and figure out what to... I think he was just, I I was just busy. Oh. He's just, yeah. He just didn't care that much. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, and they talk about girls and like their wacky lives. Okay. And it's cute. Yeah. I like seeing Pete and Matt actually yeah, being friends. Fun. And like, whatever. And he's like, listen, she's an innocent person who needs your help. And it's like, God damn it, Peter. You and your bullshit. And well, it's cute because Peter actually does like, through actual debate, yeah. like pr- break apart Matt's argument. He's like, you would have been a good lawyer. And I'm like, oh, I would have liked to see that. That's kind of fun. So they're going to go break her out? Yes, yeah, so they leave. And <laughs> they... Why don't they try to solve the mystery first? No time. So they break into the... the uh... This just tells no, you that Spider-Man die just in prison. doesn't believe that she didn't kill him. He's yeah. like, she's guilty. We have to break her out. It's the only way. <laughs> but I, well, I think it's more like... I told you she didn't kill him. No, 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 no. For me, I think he thinks she was raped by this guy and I wasn't strong enough to keep her from getting there in the first right, place. So, so I, I feel her. guilty. I owe her big time. Yeah. So they get to the prison. She and was all supposed the... to come back and unweb me and she never came back. Mm-hmm. So it's my the... fault. I'm Peter Parker. I'm wrecked by guilt. <laughs> That's right. So uh, they get to the prison and now the guards are dead. And Felicia is being held by Francis, Garrison's brother. So Francis is like, you didn't tell me your friends were coming, Felicia. And then Daredevil punches Spider-Man. And the two of them start fighting. And Felicia's like, Francis, stop it! So Francis is not just a teleporter, he's also a telepath. And he's forcing Spider-Man and Daredevil to fight each other. And they're gonna kill each other. And Felicia's like, stop it, make them stop. And he's like, you don't know. Like, they'll never understand. They'll never understand our problem. And she's like, we'll make them, we'll make them understand, Francis. You gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta make them stop. And uh, she goes- problem? Yeah. Mm. And so uh, she's like, can you take us away from here just, just to get us out of here? And he's like, oh, I've never tried to teleport that far. She's like, we'll try. So they, they teleport out of there. And then Matt and Parker are like, stop. Right. And they're like, and, and Matt's like, oh, crap. He's a teleporter. And Spider-Man's like, worse. He's telekinetic, too. And you're like, oh, no. What? This what? book just took a, a turn. What the heck is like, well, happening? Oh, is that, that side why character? Nightcrawler was on the net, one yeah, of the Yeah, why covers? is Nightcrawler on the next cover? Because basically, uh, after... Daredevil and Spider-Man escape from the prison break. Uh, they call in their X-Men contacts and get Nightcrawler to show up to get some information about teleportation. Because they don't know anything about teleporters. Okay. Right. Uh, meanwhile, we get a flashback to Francis and Garrison's lives together in, like, New Jersey. Uh-huh. Uh, Francis... In Red Bank? Yeah, in Red Bank. Yeah. And Francis used to be bullied, and Garrison, like, beat the ever-loving crap out of some like of those bullies, thereby indenturing Francis to him. And so then uh, Garrison forced Francis, his brother, to like let him like have sex with him. So like now Garrison Clum is like a big time rapist and he's like been like banging his brother or making his brother blow him or whatever horrible things that Garrison makes Francis do to him. That is weird. Francis is a, is a, is a rape victim. Okay. Francis saw that Felicia was in the city of undress and that Garrison was going to attack her. Right. So Francis used his teleportation powers to alien Garrison Clum. He teleported into Garrison and blasted out of him. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Wait a minute. How could they have thought that she did that? If, oh. If his body was like torn asunder Obliterated? from I mean, the inside he's in, out. He's still in pieces. The point is Well, they that, showed like, him face down in like the crime scene photos. Right. So I'm guessing he just teleported like into the front half of him. Yeah. Which like how would a person do that yeah, with right? their hands? Like she just ripped him like, like come on. I mean he should have like claws. in a specific way to make it look like someone came out of yeah. him. Why would she do that? Well you have to ignore it because everyone else does. So <laughs> Okay. They uh so he basically tells the story to Felicia and then uh they're they're on top of the on top of the bridge by the way. Because they, we gotta have it on a bridge. God damn it. The bridge? Yeah. The Gwen Stacy bridge? The Gwen Stacy bridge. Uh, so, I guess that's the Brooklyn Bridge? I don't actually know which bridge it, it is. In the original comic, it was the, it was the George Washington Bridge, okay. but drawn as the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> and then in all the retcons, it was the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. But anyway, so uh, Felicia's like, I'm feeling a little exposed and wearing these like prison clothes. And so uh, Francis teleports her black cat costume and then she undresses in front of him and changes into it. Okay. Uh, so Spider-Man and Matt like have a have a meeting with Nightcrawler who talks about teleportation and stuff. 
Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Francis basically tells you his backstory about how, like, he when he discovered that he could teleport, and how he's like, oh, I could, like, their, their mom died. Is he a mutant? Wanna, yeah. Okay. Well, like, no. Oh. He and Garrison are both teleporters? teleporters yeah. It's just, uh, Francis is a, is a better teleporter, I assume? Yeah, Francis can teleport, like, himself and also other people, and Garrison can teleport the small amounts of heroin that they were selling right. into people's systems. Uh, it was their way of leveraging a profitable drug business to the stars, where they're like, oh, no track marks, no uh, paper trail. What okay. we do is you, you just call me. You call me, and then I just teleport and these things into your system. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it worked. And I'm like, that's kind of clever. That, that thing right there yeah. that you did is kind of clever. That's a clever idea. Yeah. They also don't have to like inject themselves. That's and stuff. what I'm saying. No yeah. track marks. No, it's, no, yeah. uh, very, no messy needles. Nothing. It's a very interesting use of teleportation. Yeah. yeah. That. I would never have thought of. No, yeah. and I kind of liked it. Like when he Good shows, for you, Kevin, you had an idea. Yeah, I mean, when he has the when he shows Felicia, it says "Bamf." I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, you got me. Yeah, that's cool. Now look at this. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but then uh, Francis talks about how like he I don't know, like Garrison decides that Francis needs to lose his virginity, and so like he gets her a prostitute in Atlantic City, and uh, she wants to like he's like I gotta do it the way that my brother and I do it and she's like nope I gotta pay extra for that and then he uses his telekinesis to force her to oh let him God. like yeah and you're like what and the whole book just basically becomes a book about rape and you're like oh in in, in th <laughs> three issues ago we were having like fun sexy times in Manhattan but now we're gonna turn into a rape book yeah all right so basically this book took a hard left yeah, yeah it did so well, four years will do that, right? Yeah, something. Kev had a really hard time, and uh, so basically, what was it? Nightcrawler tells them about how like there are very few level one mutant teleporters besides like him and a couple others. He's like, but there are other people who have teleportation-like abilities who are not technically mutants, and they are victims of what is known as the Night of Broken Lives, or what the Night of Broken Lives translates into German, which is one giant long word that's about 12 letters. The Nazis hunted mutants and then, like, cross their organs into regular people. They basically, like, proto-created mutates. Uh, okay. And this, of course, took place in Germany, where the Clums emigrated from and whatnot, so, like, at first, I think that Kevin wanted to make it that they were part of the Wagner family. Okay. Kurt Wagner, a.k.a. Sure. Nightcrawler. Yeah. But then, within four years, they were like, no. And so he's like, okay, well, then they were mutates that emigrated from a similar area that the that Nightcrawler would be familiar with. Okay. And so, as such, like, they were... A co they basically decided, like, when the Allies showed up, like, that they were going to, like, expunge all of their, you know, Nazi mutate programs right and then the allies showed up and like killed all of them and and rescued a couple of them who actually wound up being like the clums parents or grandparents okay and the clums used sure. their abilities to parlay their drug business into like legitimate businesses so they were like kind of like outweighing the the, the heroin dealings with like actual like legitimate operations mm -hmm. um, but that didn't stop garrison from still raping francis and that apparently his telekinesis didn't work on Garrison Klum, which is why he had to teleport into him instead of just using his telekinesis to make Klum yeah. not right. rape anybody or, you know, aggress him. Okay. So uh, that's why he blew him up. So the thing that pushed him over the line was he was, was going to rape Black Cat. Yes. He's like, enough. enough. Not any prior no. shenanigans. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Because he cares about this random. Well, he's just like he. I think he was. I mean, the, he, he grew saw up it. With trauma. Yeah. yeah. He he was he was about to see it happen again, and he's like never again or something like that. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, they show Nightcrawler the picture, and he's like, "Oh, somebody teleported out of this guy." I I didn't know it actually could happen. Huh. I never tried. Because I never would do that. But I th I thought maybe I would get mixed up with that person. Yeah. yeah. So maybe by mistake. Right. But uh, they talk about how. Um, Felicia was arrested and sent to Rikers and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, ooh, you know, it's interesting you say Rikers because on Cerebra, the new version of Cerebro at the Xavier Institute that looks for mutants, they also use it to track the internet for mutant-related activity to try and find, like, aggressive trolls or people who are, like, looking to do harm against mutants. Somebody at Rikers was Googling what the range could be on a teleporter. Okay. So it's like, so oh, it was... so I guess Felicia freed herself from her cell 
Well, maybe she was in the library. Computer. Yeah, it was in the know, library. Because you get access That's to That's true. And she, yeah. So she checks out, like, the, the limits of Francis' abilities. And okay. then caused Francis to basically test the limits of those abilities by taking them to the bridge. So... They're like, okay, so now we have like we can pinpoint like where he was and what the li- what his range would be. Okay. And so that's how they basically that's how Kevin justifies them being finding able to find them. them. How about? Yeah. I put a tracker well, on her suit but, or something. Like that. Yeah, but I was gonna like, say use Cerebra, but you can't track just people. No. Right. Uh, w- yeah, but knowing the range would give you like a gigantic circle. Oh, absolutely. Especially just, in which. Well, to but search. they just started at the. <laughs> well, we got a teleporter now. Uh, even though Nightcrawler knows going to appear after the S. Uh, but what if what uh, if they teleported twice? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, but it does. It took a lot out of him, and he tries to leave, and he uh-huh. can't. But uh, yeah, I guess Nightcrawler would know. Like, if you teleported like to the extent of your range, like you'd have to rest for a little while. Right. You have to eat yeah. a sandwich. You have to, you have to recharge your ability. <laughs> you have to have a banana, <laughs> yeah. like, or you have to throw yourself <laughs> off the game screen uh, so that you regenerate. <laughs> yeah. and then, You know, three more uses. That's a good point. Uh, so basically, she says like, you know, we you were a victim. And you don't have to worry about, like, being punished because, like... Like the ramifications. Yeah, the right. ramifications. You just got like, me out of jail. They still think it was me. Right. Like, like, everyone's and, fine. And it, I'll it, just be uh, uh, on the lam forever. Right. Like, I always was, you know? But also, she's trying to tell him, like, you know, don't feel bad. Like, you got revenge against your attacker. And right. That's awesome. And he's like, like, you seem to have a lot of knowledge. And that's when Black Hat reveals that she also is a victim of rape. Ah. Uh. And you're like, oh... So that's the big retcon, is that Black Cat was raped in college. Okay. And you're like, I didn't know that Felicia went to college, but okay. Uh, sure. Oh, she was just there. But the idea is that, like, basically, uh, Felicia, may, uh, Felicia met a guy uh, who was super nice and was super great, and they, like, dated. They were actual, like, uh, an actual couple. Mm-hmm. And they had a really great, like, relationship. And uh, then he, like, pushed it too far and took advantage of her and, like, raped her. In okay. Her um, we, he tries to do the bait and switch where it's like she's at a party and there's this random dude and he's too drunk and he's like Argh. and this other dude shows up and he like annoys him into going away and he's like hey listen like that guy is a dickhead so like let's let's get out of here mm-hmm. and turns that into a relationship right and so you're like oh okay and it's it's actually kind of interesting because Statistically, most rapes are committed by people who actually you will know, as opposed yeah. to people you don't. Yeah, and it's like it's not like strangers. It's not usually. always going to be like strangers, yeah. and, uh, and, and 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 so that's kind of interesting and responsible to like yeah, it's trying to portray be a it in this... realistic portrayal. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, or, or more typical of what actually might happen. Right, and yeah. so he he did rape her, and so she and she has she goes through this horrible like experience where she's just like she she receded into herself and she didn't go to class and she didn't eat and she felt like it was her fault and she was like dirty and she didn't like, that's why you didn't know that she went to college exactly she didn't really she talk about it. it yeah, yeah. And that's and that's kind of cool um but you know unfor- unfortunate yeah uh, but she basically is like so singularly minded about this experience that she's like i'm not going to be a victim i'm going to get revenge i'm going to kill my attacker so she trains, and she basically gets to the point where she can physically become the black cat. And so she's ready to do it, and then she finds out that, like, he, along with two other dudes, were in, like, a drunk driving accident, and they all died. Oh. So her vengeance was taken from her. By fate. By fate. Yeah. And so she, used, she... But she still needs to lash out and strike against somebody. Okay. And she finds out about this, like, diamond that's available, and she steals that. And she turn, and she derives joy and like purpose from becoming like the world's greatest cat burglar. That okay. is a weird twist to make her into a burglar. Yeah. Yeah, but I, like that's who she is. So yeah. I, I was going to murder my attacker, but instead, I guess I'll just steal some diamonds. Yes. That's well, I guess because like now I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. I know right. like, skills and shit. What am I going right. to do? I do have and I want to like lash out. All you did was train to kill somebody. Well, she well, trained not a burglar. Yeah, but she's like good at climbing rope and sneaking into places and stuff. Like to be able yeah, to. Yeah, because she was going to sneak in and murder him. I guess. Yeah. Well, she was waiting for him to come out of a building, but she did like climb ropes and jump over things. So I, my assumption is she no, was just like, like she's physically fit. Yeah. She's physically fit and preparing for every eventuality. Like, yeah. Do I have to break into a car or a yeah, room? I don't, I don't or a know what I'm going to have to do. I might have to do all kinds of crazy stuff. I might have to steal his jewels. Well, she certainly steals jewels throughout the book, but anyway, so she then reasons that Spider-Man like helps her like 
kind of turn over a new leaf and she finds a new agency in her life. And so mm -hmm. that's what kind of turned her around and made her be into, a, into a good person. Right. At least until she became the new kingpin of crime in a recent story. But <laughs> she eventually... Until she fell off the wagon. Yeah, and, and then the she literally just abandons that because a, a better writer is like, that was really not within her character. That sucks. And so they just threw that away. When she was kingpin of crime, did she was she like a really bad person? Yes. Or was she, oh. oh yeah, no, she like tortured people and murdered people and oh. stuff. Like, oh yeah. So no. she wasn't trying to be like, I'm gonna do like Matt Murdock nope. and become the kingpin and like try to be different. No, it's just people who didn't understand her character were like, I want to do something with her because I don't care, whatever. She's whatever. a villain, right? She's a villain. Yep. <laughs> well, there's more like not. No, no she's villain, a villain. Murder, mm -hmm. torture, uh, uh, everything. Uh, yep. And then she just like knocks it off and then shows up in the Spider-Man book and she's like, hey, I'm back to being me again. And you're like, okay. Oh, wouldn't Spider-Man have a real problem with what? her after all that? What happened with all of that? Well, but Spider-Man also was like, yeah, but like I was taken over by Doc Ock at one point. Like I got to give people the benefit of the doubt. Because... Okay, taken over by Doc Ock is entirely different. Well, well, baby, she different. was taken over by Doc Ock. Who knows? I, uh, listen, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I'm not at the editorial <laughs> office of Spider-Man. Like they just let these things happen. Yeah. You know? So anyway, uh, she's like, Explaining to Francis, like, you don't have to go through this or deal with this. Like, you can explain that, like, you were a victim of trauma and that, like, all of this was self-defense and blah, blah, blah. Uh, even well, though you were facilitating, like, definitely a criminal not empire and you're totally screwed. Well, that but, as well, uh, yeah. She's basically just trying to get them the hell out of there. Yeah. Uh, so then Spider-Man finds out where they are, because Daredevil's radar sense picks them up. Mm -hmm. And he's like, the bridge? Like, no. <laughs> and he just sees red and just shows up and just like knocks the crap out of Francis. Thank God oh. she's not wearing the headband again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be she real She took off her up. mask though uh, to like kind of appeal to Francis in like a you know person to person. Yeah. And uh, so while Spider-Man is punching Francis, Daredevil picks up Felicia and he's just screaming at Francis about like psychos stealing people he cares about from his life. Mm. And then Francis grabs Felicia's discarded mask and teleports it into Spider-Man's neck. Oh. And he's like, you lied to me. You called your friends and you oh, turned no. it on me. You're a liar. And she's like, no. And then he teleports a gun into his hands and he's going to shoot her. But then Spider-Man webs the gun as he's going to fire it so it hurts his hand. And then Francis falls off the bridge. Oh. And so Spider-Man Spider tries to save him, but he teleports as he's falling. Oh. Okay. And then uh, we cut to the next day where Pete and Felicia are kind of like taking a walk through the park. And she's so, like... It's like, damn it, I almost... I almost had him. Yeah, and, and you showed up and punched him and ruined everything. Yeah, but uh, but you know, Felicia's like, yeah, fuck that guy though. And they yeah, also, but he was. Then he tried to shoot me. So yeah, <laughs> they yeah. got advice from Nightcrawler, but Nightcrawler doesn't come and help them with the fight with no. the teleporter. No, here's how come teleportation on. works. We needed to. Bye. Okay, bye. Poof. Bam. I'm I not a tight. I'm a cameo. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's why he's on the cover. Are you sure you don't want to stick around and help us fight the bad guy? Nah, I really don't want to. There's a great uh, film on tonight. I, I must I mean, watch. It's, it's going to take like five minutes. Nine. Especially with you. <laughs> so, you just take... <laughs> yeah, so no, he, it won't take nine minutes. It'll take five. I'm telling you. So he leaves. Uh, but basically, Felicia's like, maybe he made it. And he's like, he was falling. He had to teleport, but also land. Mm, so, you know, right. maybe he had not. had momentum. Yeah. But, you know, well, we're going to assume he died. And... I'll see a body. Yeah. It's a comic book. He's mm -hmm. not dead, except no one's going to write about him again, so... You're telling me he, he did a peanut pan off of this bridge. <laughs> so... You find me a body. Yeah. So she's basically like, you know, that... I did really feel bad for him. Like, I really yeah. wanted him to turn over a new leaf. Sure. Like, uh, uh, but whatever. And uh, so Spider-Man and Felicia, like, walk off into the sunset, and she's like, Peter, I, I there's something I need to tell you about what happened to me in college. Mm. And it's like, oh... Like she's gonna, she's gonna, she's, tell, him, she's gonna yeah. tell him about her trauma. That's cool. Like she's she's ready to let him in. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, downtown at the docks, uh, the kingpin of crime, aka Wilson Fisk, is meeting up with this dude covered in bandages who is clearly Francis Clum, and Clum is gonna no. take any of the money that he used from his experience as Mr. Brownstone's facilitator mm -hmm. to buy this new identity for himself because the idea is. I'm going to be this other classic Spider-Man villain, and I'm gonna like lure him in, Spider-Man that is, right. to a false sense of security. He's gonna think, oh, smoke and mirrors or whatever, what am, I, what am I gonna do? And then I'm gonna teleport my fist into his brain. He's gonna be Mysterio? Yeah, he's gonna buy the Mysterio identity. Because Mysterio was killed by Kevin Smith in a Daredevil book, so technically Quentin Beck is dead, and so there's a vacuum for Mysterio to be That's a new guy. So Why does he want to kill Spider-Man? Because Spider-Man 
screwed everything up. He's the reason why Garrison Klum is dead and Black Hat goes, and maybe what? I'll kill that cat chick too, maybe. Black Man wasn't responsible for that. No, but he was, because I'm a crazy that was, asshole. That was Francis himself. <laughs> yeah, no. you did that, because you were because no. he was gonna rape Black Hat. No, now I'm a villain, and I'm gonna be Mysterio. And what's funny is- I learned is, nothing from all of the bad nope. stuff that happened. Mm -mm. And I remember reading this in 2006 and going, well, they're never gonna use him again. Like, fuck that. Yeah. And they do. They use this guy? Yeah, but he never executes his stupid plan. What, to become to, well, to teleport to, to just be like, okay, Spider-Man, and then like, bamf, I killed you. Like, nope, he doesn't do that. He just, he, he just is Mysterio for a little while, and then like, Quentin Beck actually isn't dead, and he shows up, and it's, it's a mess. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the rights, see, I thought you were dead. It's really dumb, really and like, the now. fact that Francis Klum is used by anybody is like, a courtesy. That's bizarre. And bizarre. Harkens to the, the Marvel Knights th theme mm. of like, ooh, pushing the envelope a little yeah. bit. And like, you know, subject matter, content. It definitely pushed the envelope in certain ways. Yeah, and it also addresses in some like frank ways the rape issue. Yeah. And I think it's valuable in its own way for that. And so if people have derived strength or some like kind of connection with it mm -hmm. through that, like go all the all the better. Yeah. Um, I. It's know. very odd. It's it, very out of nowhere. Yeah. What, the problem is that since it was a four year gap, it seems like the twist that you were not expecting. It seems like a twist that he made up. Yeah, it seems like that wasn't the plan. No. Right. Like, that, oh, like maybe it was, it else. but like it doesn't seem like it. Doesn't it. seem like it. Yeah, like, that, that's not what these three books were about though. No. They were about him being a heroin pusher. <laughs> Which Weird. turns out to, the whole heroin thing is actually like kind of like a side thing. It's really not, even though it was the thrust of the well, plot also, of these it, books. It's how he gained his prestige and empire. Yeah, yeah. Also, we never really figured out what happened to Trisha. Oh no, uh, Garrison raped and killed her and then threw her body in a dumpster. Oh. Do we get any closure on that? He, uh, does, Francis mentions it in a panel. <laughs> does, does Black Cat like? No. No. She doesn't get a moment where she's like, you she killed my friend. She doesn't even like acknowledge it like she knew her in any way. <laughs> so By like, the way, oh, this is what happened to Trisha. Who? Who? That was like four years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, Spider-Man Black Cat, the evil that men do. I, it might be uh, in trade. I've never looked for it, but uh, yeah. if it is, boom, check the description, grab a copy if you were so inclined. Um, the best part is you can just read it all in one sitting. You don't have to wait four years between issues like right. I did. Uh, yeah. Which, like, I can't believe That's that. Insane. I can't believe they finished it. By the way, yeah, right? a little, like, poetic justice was uh, due to, like, some error. Uh, Kevin didn't get paid for the first three issues until the sixth issue came out. Oh. So we actually wound up doing the whole book and then getting a paycheck for all of it. Interesting. Was that part of his contract? Was like, you get paid when you finish all six books? That would be a contract I'd draft up now Yeah. with him. There's a book he did called Daredevil Bullseye Target or something. <laughs> and that one, it's like, it, I think it was supposed to be a two-parter. And uh, part two never came out. Ever. And it started in like 2004. Spider-Man Black Hat, the evil that men do. Check it out in the description box below this video. You can get a copy of the trade paperback. And we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Here. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long and thanks for watching. I thought you said you didn't know if it was a trade paperback. If it is, it's down there. Oh. Well, what if it's not? Then, then you they just find. Well, then they can find a whole host of amazing links that they can go to, like our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash You can find all kinds of great behind-the-scenes stuff and access to an exclusive podcast that only patrons get.